Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. It looks like they're letting the general session out. We're here at the Professional Business Women of California Conference, 6,000 women, about 5% men. Uh, really talking about, it's amazing, the 28th year, I've never been to the show, about how women can get more inclusive and diversity and, and taking executing on steps to actually make it happen. As somebody said in the keynote, it's not a strategy problem, it's an execution problem. So we've got a great story here and we're really excited to have CUBE alumni, Andrea Ward. She's now the CMO of Magento Commerce. Welcome back, Andrea. Thank you so much. It's great to be here and great to be at this conference. It's, uh, the buzz is amazing and I was here two years ago and it's grown so much. How just many in the people years. were there? They say it's 6,000 now. I mean, I, 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 it looks like it's about doubled. I don't know what the numbers were two years ago, but um, it, the participation is amazing. And it's, it's such a great opportunity for local businesses to bring employees from their companies, have them have a chance just to talk right. and learn from such powerful women. So it's been a really great conference. And it's also, it crosses so many kind of verticals, if you will, because you know, we go to yeah. a lot of tech conferences. This, this is more kind of a, a cross industry with yeah. banking and insurance and you know, United Airlines we talked to earlier. And yeah. so it's a, it's a much more diverse kind of set. Absolutely, I mean, the women on the panels this morning spanned legal professions, government, entertainment, business, um, really a diverse, issue and it's it's fantastic that women are coming together to support each other right. to help make a difference. So last we saw you, I think we were on the street on Howard Street uh, a couple yeah. years back, which is pretty exciting yeah. as well, but now you're at your new uh, new company, Magento Commerce, so for people who aren't familiar with the company, give them kind of the uh, 411. Yeah, great. Well, Magento Commerce is the leading commerce technology platform for mid-sized businesses. Uh, uh, we have recently uh, separated from eBay about 15 months ago and um, are now uh, a privately held company and we power about a third of the world's commerce, believe it or not. That is amazing, yeah. a third of the world's e-commerce. That's right, that's right, that's right. So it's a fantastic company, um, we're growing um, and a part of that growth is absolutely, absolutely um, growing a more diverse workforce, and right. they, we've been putting into, into place some initiatives since last year. Yeah, it, uh, part of the keynote conversations were obviously, you, need, you know, you need to put goals down on yeah. paper, and you need to measure them, and I think it was Bev Creer from Intel talked about, yeah. you know, doing it across all the pay grades. It's not just in engineering, or just on the board, or just in the executive ranks, but really all yeah. the way across, and it sounds like, you guys are executing that to really help you just grow the company generically. Well, we're in a very lucky position in that we're experiencing growth, and so that gives us room to really look, go out and look for amazing talent across the board. And so we put a focus on diversity and inclusion, and by doing that, we've increased the percentage of women in all roles across the company by 50%, and that's since last June. So um, I think you know, really just what, what you said earlier about execution and putting some numbers and goals uh, uh, against that can really make a difference. Right, and if you hadn't had those, that execution detail, you probably couldn't have grown that fast because let's face it, it's hard to get good talent. If you're not yeah. including a broader base of talent, you're not going to be able to achieve your goals. Well that's right, and I think that it, some of that is I don't know if you want to call it unconscious bias or unintentional, we're used right. to hiring people that look like us, right, right. have experience right, like us. Right. And so by encouraging that diversity, it really has made us expand the pool of applicants, make sure that we're um, not going for the easiest choice or the simplest choice, but really uh, considering a wide range of candidates right. to fill those positions. Yeah, I don't think the birds of a feather conversation comes up enough, it's just easy. To yeah. go with what you're familiar with. That's so whether right. it's unconscious or not, it's yeah. just easy. People are busy. Right. You want to check the box and get off to your next task. So well, you have to take a step back and consciously do the extra work, right. do, take the extra effort. Well, and the industry we support, the industries we support, are going through digital transformation. I mean, commerce is key and central to digital transformation, and transformation and change means that you have to consider other perspectives. You need to learn from new ideas. And I think you know, diversity plays a big part in that as well. So I think bringing that into our own company because we're supporting that broader industry has been very important. Right. So I want to take that opportunity to pivot on what you just yeah. said about in terms of the changing role of commerce. You yeah. know, I, I, I often think of like banks. 
Because in a bank, you know, your relationship yeah. was with your local branch. Maybe you knew the banker, right. maybe you knew a couple of the, the tellers or whatever, but you had a personal connection. Now, most people's engagement with the brands they interact with yeah. is electronic yeah. and via their phone. Yeah. And it's interesting that you say that, it, and it's the commerce around this yeah. engagement that the commerce is becoming the central uh, point of gravity, if you will, and the relationship is spawning all from that. Well, I mean, personal connections are still very important. And commerce, I feel, is like the moment where a conversation really turns into a relationship. So it's important that those digital experiences, the customer experiences, um, really make a, the right connection with the brand. And so that seamless um, interaction between what happens at the branch, for example, in the financial example, right. and what you can do at home, that needs to be very cohesive. It needs to be trustworthy, it needs to be authentic. And that means businesses need to create individual experiences that really reflect their brand. And uh, our company specifically has, um, has really helped businesses create those experiences, seamless experiences, and translated them from digital to uh, in-store or in the branch. I think the biggest change now is how that's starting to impact business to business relationships. I think in the in consumer world, we're used to that now, right, right? right? We're all doing that in our everyday experiences. Now it's we're starting to see that also come into a business to business relationship. So um, just like those seamless conveniences that you have online in your day to day life, people want to see that in the work workplace too. And we're so we're seeing the biggest change now in those types of business models. They're rocking in the background if you can't hear them. Yeah. We are here. But yeah. you no, know, it's funny, I just saw I just saw some something come across the feed talking about that annoying business to business ad in Instagram. Yeah. And then but then aren't you glad you saw it? So it's yeah. it's it's interesting how you know the 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 B2C norms you know continue to help define what's right. going on in the B2B space and, and we've seen it in enterprise software applications yeah. and cloud and, and the flexibility yeah. and speed of innovation. It just continues to really drive yeah. the business to business relationship. Yeah, and I think I think just like in the business to consumer world, it has started with content um, in business to business. But now people want to move from just learning and knowledge to actually transacting. Right. Um, which means that companies need to enable uh, specialized price list, account management, uh, things like that, and that's starting to surface in commerce, in the commerce world as well, so uh, we're really excited about that, and we're going to be sharing some of that at our, our conference next week, Imagine in Las Vegas. Okay, yeah, it's amazing how fast, it was not that long ago we were just trying to get the 360 view, uh, right? I know. We were just trying to pull from all the various disparate systems to know who that customer well, was for right. different systems. Now, it's a segmentation to one, a very different challenge. Right, I mean, it's that change from thinking about trying to attract your co uh, customer to come to your business to really bringing the business to the customer. I mean, I think that's what some of this digital technology is allowing us to do. We're going to them rather than trying to draw them in to come to us, if that makes sense. Right, right. This idea of commerce coming to you, right. And it's got to come to you with something that's relevant, that's topical, that's timely. That's easy to execute, that can mirror a real experience. I mean, you hear a lot of things about things like um, virtual reality, uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, all of that's just gimmicks, unless you can actually think about how you make that real for your brand. So, for example, we have a customer in uh, Mexico City who um, is s selling eyewear, right? And so everybody, when they buy glasses, they want to try them on. Right. So we need to help them give their customers that virtual experience. If they can't come into the store and try them on, we want to be able to let them try them on at right. home. Right. So that's a natural extension of the brand and a way to use virtual reality. Um, and I think businesses are still trying to figure that out. Um, but if you, if they, if our, those customers didn't have that experience, it'd be less likely that they actually would uh, buy or you right. know, make a commerce transaction. But if I'm hearing you, instead of it really kind of being a marketing effort that then is completed with a transaction, you're kind of coming at that 
which you yeah, just described from the transaction right. first, and this is really a supporting or an enabling activity. That's right, it all starts with the customer understanding what is going to help them make their decisions, um, giving them experiences that feel seamless, giving them options, so if they want to come in store but see what's maybe available at another store for pickup, or if they want to come in store and order online, or if they want to order uh, from home and then go into the store and pick it up, it's really about giving the customer the right options for them. Right. Another great story we had is, I mean, how many of us travel? I know you travel a right, lot, I right. travel a ton. Especially to Vegas. And it is especially <laughs> to Vegas, and um, you know, I, I have, my kids are always expecting something when I come home, but who has time? So, right, right. you know, one of our partners worked with the Frankfurt Airport and created an application where on the way to the airport, you can go shopping at all of their stores in the airport and have your package waiting for you at the gate on the way to the plane. So now, you know, they figured out what their customers want to do first by creating this great shopping experience at the airport. Now they know right, right. people are running through the airport. How can we extend that shopping experience for them while they're sitting in the taxi on the way, have it waiting for them at the grate? And, um, and, and so for me personally, um, working for a company that's helping customers to do those kinds of things right. has really been fun. Right, because they always had the liquor for you ready to go at the gate, well, but never yeah. the kids, you know, t-shirts or a right. little tchotchke, or I, right. I can remember running through Heathrow time well, and time again, right, yeah. trying to find something quickly. Yeah, and now with two kids and a husband that all want something different, <laughs> you know, it makes it much easier for all them. All right, Andrea, so, well you've been doing this marketing thing for a long time. I'll yeah. give you the last word, both on the conference and kind of, you know, as, as a marketer to see where we're going with AI and, and really the ability to actually segment to one, yeah. you know, how exciting is that for you? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. So I think, you know, marketers want to create relationships with their brand, and all of these tools are giving us better access, better um, chance to create that fantastic experience. So it's a great time to be a marketer, <laughs> and it's a great time to be at this, this conference too. So all right. Thanks very much. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Andrea right. Ward, I'm Jeff Rick. You're watching theCUBE from the Professional Business Women's Conference in San Francisco. Thanks for watching.